And now I know that you're um, you, you're celebrating, so to speak, or, or at least uh, talking a lot about the cashless economy or economies in Asia. You know, that's coming up in a week's time. So we'll get to that topic in a moment. But of course, everyone wants to know about this MoneyGram deal. So you refiled uh, with uh, with the U.S. authorities, uh, the U.S. competition authorities on uh, on MoneyGram. What's the situation there? What, what, why does it need to be refiled? Well, with MoneyGram, uh, we remain very excited uh, about the transaction, and remittance is a product that our consumers around the world uh, very much want to do and want to do more, and we think it's going to be uh, a great uh, platform for us to use to do that. Mm -hmm. When we announced the transaction back in January, we said we look to close it in the second half, and we're still on track uh, to do that. So we're working through the regulatory approval processes, both CFIUS, and the state approvals um, and are you know on track to close uh, in the second half so okay. uh, we're we're looking forward to that and all all going well so far what are the regulators saying though you know in the refiling what do you what do you need to change in order to get the regulatory approvals well I, I can't comment specifically on, on, on the regulatory processes as they're confidential, uh, but I can share with you that um, you know the processes are proceeding as uh, we had uh, initially expected, and we're working uh, you know very constructively with uh, all the different regulatory bodies, responding to their questions, uh, answering uh, you know further inquiries they have for data, mm -hmm. uh, and and that's all uh, moving along quite well. But nothing so. substantive to changing any parts of the deal, though. Uh, no, no changes to the deal uh, okay. as a result of these processes. Uh, and how is this going to affect the IPO if it has any impact? Um, you know, I don't think that this transaction has anything to do with, uh, you know, a potential IPO. Um, and so this is part of our kind of core strategy mm -hmm. of expanding the products and services that we have for Alipay customers around the world. And that's what it's really looking to do, uh, not, not related to any consideration of a potential IPO. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but we do have to keep asking about the potential IPO. And if that happens, what are the pros and cons of the different places that you could list? Look, as it relates to, uh, you know, potential IPO, we don't have uh, any current uh, plans or timetable uh, to go public. We can see the benefits of uh, being a public company and if and when we make a decision about that we'll look at things such as which venue to uh, choose and the like. Uh, but for right now we're very much focused on expanding our business and there's a huge mm. amount to do in, in building the merchant network and expanding the partnerships we have around the world um, and looking to uh, provide more services and things to our customers. So that's uh, really our primary focus uh, at this point. Talking about that expansion, of course, you've made inroads in India, Thailand, South Korea. What's your next target when it comes to that expansion? Yeah, we're, um, we're very pleased with the investments we've made so far. Um, so Paytm going back two years ago and now uh, across Asia in Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, Korea and Hong Kong where we're expanding. And we really are focused on those regions uh, that we've already, where we've already announced partnerships and uh, further mm -hmm. partnerships in Asia, uh, as those are the areas where many Chinese tourists go. And so there are natural connections with our core customer base in mainland China and a great opportunity to expand the local user base through these partnerships. So um, we're focused on continuing to build the customer base there um, and then perhaps extend those partnerships into some new markets in Asia. So Doug, tell me about this, uh, this week where you're talking about the cashless cities campaign. What is this exactly? Well, it's, it's very exciting. You know, China has really embraced uh, the cashless society. Yeah. And, I was just uh, in Hong Kong. I, I, really got, I really got a first-hand taste of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, just, I was just telling my wife I forgot my uh, wallet at our house in Southampton. I'm not even worried. I'm just going to get on the plane tomorrow and go. Uh, it should be fine. And um, we're, we're very excited about um, our Cashless Cities Week, mm -hmm. uh, which is August 1st through the 8th. And um, this is a key initiative where we're really trying to show customers what the cashless lifestyle is all about right. across China, and to uh, show. But people do you need to really? I mean, I'm, I heard that 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 you know. I mean, this is anecdotally, but people were telling me that homeless people are not even using cash anymore. <laughs> this is what I was told. Uh, I mean, do you need to really educate people on this? Well, I, I would tell you, China is probably one of the most advanced countries in the world in terms of the cashless society. Right. Um, and um, we already have five cities. 
signed up to be a cashless city, quote unquote, um, as part of this initiative. And so that's Hangzhou, Don't our headquarters, but also Tianjin, Wuhan, uh, Fuzhou, uh, and uh, Guiyang mm. are all part of this initiative uh, where you know cashless is the, the way of commerce right. uh, in these cities. And and you're right, it goes down to the panhandler from, you know, from taxis and movie theaters <laughs> to all the way to the panhandler where you can just scan a QR code and make and your payment. And just go, right. When you talk about cashless here in Asia, you cannot not talk about India. How has the demonetization drive started last year affected your businesses there as you make inroads into that market? India has been a huge success story for us. Um, you know, through our partnership with Paytm, uh, we have greatly expanded the customer base uh, in India. Uh, you're right, demonetization was something that encouraged people more and more to think about the use of e-wallets and to uh, use them more and more regularly. Uh, and that, since demonetization, has stuck. And so the trend toward uh, cashless payment uh, and using their mobile payment uh, platform through Paytm has continued to expand. We're now expanding the use cases with Paytm uh, very much more broadly, where you know it started doing uh, mobile top-up, P2P payments, and now with things like movie theaters, offline mm. uh, payments, and merchants and the like, uh, people are able to use their Paytm wallet, uh, you know, across the board for almost anything that they would like to do. Uh, you know, uh, someone else who uh, I'm sure would want to join in on this campaign, but but they wouldn't because they're your arrival, which is ten cents, right? I mean, I was hearing all over the place as well about how people are using WeChat, you know, as 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 as, as payment, you know, as their as their method of payment. So how do you compete with WeChat? Because I heard a lot about them. I mean, you know, they're a formidable uh, competition, and, and market share is going towards them. How are you going to compete on that? Well, yeah, I'd say, look, payments is one of the most competitive. Uh, markets in the world um, and you know we have tough competition all around the world uh, and we're you know that doesn't daunt us at all in fact and the competition that is the most innovative to us is kind of the most energizing uh, because these are companies that are changing consumer behavior and encouraging people to do a lot of the things that we're encouraging them to do but what uh, makes one use, choose you over choose Ali you know choose choose and financial Alipay over over WeChat well, what's what, going to be the you know, difference what we offer our consumers is a uh, method of convenience, so it's on the mobile phone and easy to pay, but also great connectivity to merchants. And we have great relationships with the merchants in addition to the consumers. Mm. And so those merchants can then show uh, consumers things about the products and services that they offer, and they can even offer promotions. Uh, for if you wanted a particular type of purse this day, you can come in and get that and maybe even get uh, a discount on it. And we've worked very closely with building right. those merchant relationships, not only you know, in China, but indeed as we've expanded around the world. Uh, now where we have hundreds yeah. of thousands of merchants uh, in different markets where the Chinese tourists are going. Mm. And those uh, merchants are expanding and the number of Chinese tourists are expanding. Uh, so it's great, uh, you know, that connectivity between the merchants and the consumers we see as our core competitive advantage. I think the competition is also heating up in the U.S. market, isn't it? I mean, we are hearing China Union Pay collaborating with these uh, U.S. payment networks. I just wonder, when it comes to the U.S. market, with President Trump uh, just uh, emphasizing the America First policy, have you seen any different impact on how you're proceeding with regulatory approval? Hmm. No, look, I'd say the U.S. market continues to be uh, very attractive for us, and we see um, this to be a very transparent and uh, clear market. Uh, you're always going to have different things uh, from a political point of view, uh, but the things that we're focused on are expanding our merchant network uh, from a business perspective, uh, doing uh, the completing the money gram transaction, which is a regulatory approval process, and you know that's a very clear process with a clear sets of guidelines. And so uh, you know we're working through that with all the various regulators, uh, and uh, you know plan to, to get that done in the second half, so that should go 